When we think of the Arctic, we think of massive sheets of ice, magnificent polar bears and experiencing nature in its purest form. But our polar regions, especially the one in the north, is rapidly changing and projections of ice-free summers in the Arctic by 2035 have increased its strategic value. The pace of melting ice in the last few decades has created a lot of opportunities for world powers. The region contains 30% of the gas and 16% of the total oil resources of the planet. And the natural resources make the Arctic a new geopolitical hotspot. They say the problem of tomorrow should be a debate of today. And tomorrow's problem increasingly looks like competition and potential conflict over the Arctic. The melting north connects North America, Asia and Europe creating not just new sea routes, but also military routes. The land within the Arctic Circle is divided among eight countries, Russia, the US, Canada, EU nations of Norway, Denmark and Iceland, and Sweden and Finland, countries that could soon, countries soon to join the NATO. And once they do, seven out of eight countries in the Arctic will now be NATO members. So that's just a broader sense of the situation as far as the Arctic Circle and its strategic significance is concerned. Now, Russia has always maintained a stronghold in the Arctic due to its vast geography, longest coastline and its powerful role in world affairs. In recent years, Russia has been developing its military infrastructure in the Arctic and along the coast of the Arctic Ocean, it is placing hypersonic ballistic missiles that can threaten the United States. And this is what the NATO Secretary General is warning the US allies about as he visited Canada's Arctic region. Russia has set up uh, a new Arctic command. It has opened hundreds of new and former Soviet-era Arctic military sites, including airfields and deep water ports. Russia is also using the region as a testbed for many of its new and novel weapon systems. It's about the fact that the shortest path uh, for uh, Russian missiles, for Russian bombers, is over the North Pole, the Polar uh, Sea. So therefore what happens here matters uh, not only for Canada, it matters for the whole uh, alliance. But we also realize that the importance of the high north is increasing for uh, NATO and for Canada. Because we see a significant Russian military buildup with new bases, new uh, weapon system, and also using the high north as a testbed for their most advanced uh, weapons, including hypersonic uh, missiles. In the Arctic, Russia is deploying missiles and technologies that its president Vladimir Putin considers invincible. Russia even has air and naval bases in Wrangel Island, which is less than 500 kilometers from Alaska. The North Warning System of the United States established during the 1980s has outdated technologies and is incapable of providing defense against modern cruise missiles and the advanced weaponry of Russia. Partnering with Russia in the region is none other than China. And Beijing seems to be a less obvious player in the Arctic with its closest territory some 8,000 kilometers by sea from Bering Strait. But it most definitely is not. China has been pressing for a greater role in the Arctic and Russia has been supporting it. It is a marriage of convenience between the two sides in the Arctic. And Russia seeks a partner in China against the growing US-led alliance of NATO. China needs Russia for its economic ambitions in the region. China is, in fact, in pursuit of shorter trade routes and meeting its energy demands. The two countries are expanding cooperation for shipping and exploration of resources in the Arctic. China is also planning to construct the world's largest icebreaker fleet. So the Russian military capabilities, coupled with Chinese nuclear icebreakers and polar flying squadrons, have given the two an edge over the US and its allies, and this has left them worried. The United States has said that it will create a position of Arctic ambassador to step up diplomacy as Russia and China increase their presence in the region. 
The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken will soon name an ambassador at large who will engage with the other Arctic nations and stakeholders. The NATO-Russia standoff in Ukraine and China-U.S. rivalry in the Indo-Pacific is now mirroring itself on top of the world and is shaping this new battle space. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.